What's going on, y'all? It's Brother Knowledge coming at y'all early this morning. It's about 4.35 in the morning. Been studying my word. You know, then got me a whole new book. This book right here is amazing. You know, it's the, the Bible, but it's the Bible with the Apocrypha right in it. So I just got this just the other day. But, I mean, this, this right here, man, I'm like a kid in a candy store when it comes to this book. I, I was so excited I had to stay in it. You know, got off the live on Bego uh, with my with my brothers on there and even uh, uh, sisters as well. But I found something. Hey, good morning. I found something in Scripture where um, it told us the, the fatherless children, uh, the ones that their fathers may not have been in their life, their dads may not have been there, but we're supposed to forgive them. And we're actually supposed to help them. We're supposed to bless them. We're not supposed to do to them you know, what they did to us. We're not supposed to abandon them. We're not supposed to abandon neither one of our parents, to be honest with you, but we're supposed to uh, bless them and help them, you know, in their old age. That's what we are supposed to be doing. So when I found that in Ecclesiasticus chapter 3, man, I began to weep. I began to cry because not only I, but even other brothers, a lot of us have been holding on. Now, I'm not holding on to it any longer, but um, I was crying because I used to be that way where I held on to a past hurt and I wouldn't let it go and I couldn't get nowhere in life. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't get nowhere um, when it come, when it came to a relationship, when it came to even a relationship, even to with my own children, a relationship with um, my dad, a relationship with my mom's, a relationship with my wife, relationship and just even friendship alone, just a relationship with people in this world in general. Because I hadn't let go of a lot of things that uh, I was holding on to as a young man and even growing up into um, a grown man. So when I when I read this, man, I began to weep because it, it just it hit me so hard. You know what I'm saying? But I'm so grateful that me and my pops actually get to work together. You know, uh, I get to pass on advice to him. And I mean, shoot, he, he dropping knowledge on me as far as far as the business that uh, he's doing. So uh, I'm going to read the Father's Heart Ministry. And then from there, I'm going to go into Ecclesiastes chapter three. We'll do the full chapter of it and I'll break it down for you as we go. So this is what the Father's Heart Ministry says. Oh, and don't let me get first uh, forget. First and foremost, we always got to pray. We always got to thank the Father for allowing us to be on this platform, for allowing us to be up at this time, getting some knowledge and some wisdom to get an understanding of what we are to do. So, Father, we thank you first and foremost for this platform, for your sons and daughters that are listening in, that are tuning in, that this uh, word is edifying them. Father God, this is, um, you know, just stepping into my calling, Father, and I just thank you for uh, never leaving me nor forsaking me. I thank you for sparing my life and allowing me to be able to tell my story and help someone else, Father God, because my story is not for me, but it's for your uh, sons and daughters. And I thank you, Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you are the kingdom, you are the power, and you are the glory forever and ever. So be it. Some some people say so be it. Some people say so shall it be. And then some say amen. I say so be it. It is done. Um, so the Father's Heart Ministry says this. And this is for January 25th. 2021. The Father says today, Allow my gospel to penetrate every Nineveh in your life and your heart. My people must not only come out of the Babel on the earth, but Babel must come out of them. Every tower, every construct, every edifice not founded upon who I am and what I have done is coming down. There is no room in this walk for the architecture of self-direction to take up space that I have brought or bought in you by the shedding of the blood on Calvary. Before Nineveh ever repented, the Nineveh and Jonah must need have been dealt with. 
I am ready, says God, to bring you out of the great fish of your circumstance if you are prepared to do those things I've called you to that have conveniently laid unaddressed. The moment has come and the time is now. The citizens of Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonah. And I ask you, are you Jonah in the boat or in the fish? Are you Jonah on the shore or Jonah confronting the babel all around you that my words burn as fire and bring the masses to my throne? I am not just moving in individuals. I am moving to save whole cities. The nations that forgot my name will gain bow at my altar. My name again will bow at my altar. My name will no longer be a byword, but a watchword of righteousness in the earth. I call you this day. I commission you as I commission Jonah. What next? If you can't do it yourself, find someone who will do the kindness of throwing you overboard. Be engulfed in my deeps and become, I say, become that one who stands between death and life, between heaven and hell, with a message of power and of love for the darkened minds of those I so love that I gave my all to redeem them. Man, that was powerful. Like, you, it's, it's time, man. It's, the time is now to actually get away from certain things. You got to pull yourself out. You know, or you got to have somebody throw you out. Do you want to be thrown out or can you just walk away? The choice is yours. For me, I would rather walk away than to be thrown out. I would rather walk away and get talked about behind my back than to get thrown out on my butt and have to pick myself up. Nah, I'd rather just walk away and keep my head held high. And I hope you will do the same. So in Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, here's the Bible. It says, Bible, King James Version, and the Apocrypha. Man, it's on time. I don't know why some people won't read from the Apocrypha, but it's some of this stuff that's in here that ain't in the King James Version. But... You can find a precept that aligns up with what's being said in the King James Version, or uh, which is the Bible, or what's also in the Apocrypha. So you can find something in the Bible that aligns up with the Apocrypha, or you can find something in the Apocrypha that aligns up with the Bible. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. So, Ecclesiasticus. Let's get a little little music, if y'all don't mind. I like this song by Isaac Carey. It's called Preach. Let me get over there to Ecclesiasticus. All right. That's me, <laughs> but I'm working, y'all. Labor for myself. To fix everything you are going through. And this man All right. is incredible. All right, so in Ecclesiasticus chapter 3, right here, I got it highlighted. I didn't want to highlight the whole thing. I just highlighted that one so that lets me know to read the full chapter. Hear me, your father. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. It says, hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that you may be safe. For the Lord hath given the Father honor over the children, 
and hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Whoso honoreth his father making atonement for his sins. And he that honoreth his mother is one is as one that layeth up treasure. So honoring, honoring your father and your mother will do what? Make an atonement for your sins. You won't even go and do such a thing. You know what I'm saying? And if you do, you'll feel bad and you won't go back and do it, in, in my opinion. But to me, when you have the father and the mother in the picture, mainly the father that brings the correction, that brings the discipline, that brings the love of a father in a whole new aspect. I mean, I don't mean just in words. I mean in action, in guidance, practicing what he preaches, doing what he teaches. That right there, a child won't, won't deter from that because you look out in the world and you see the way some of us grew up without a dad without a leader, without a disciplinarian, without someone issuing the correction, you see what it looks like. But uh, don't get me wrong, the mother does great. She does. But she shouldn't be alone. She shouldn't have to do this alone. So to the dads that wasn't there for our mothers, I say this. Shame on you. Shame on you for provoking your children to wrath. And also to the mothers that denied the fathers to be able to see their children. Shame on you for provoking your children to wrath. You are to blame. Also, hey, maybe if you would have just waited instead of out there fornicating... Maybe you would have just waited to marriage. Things could have worked out. But that's why we can't do such a thing anymore. We have no excuse on why we shouldn't do this. That's why you got to stay in this word. You got to dive into it. You have to stay in it daily. Not just on Sunday worshiping the sun God. No, every day, all day. When you at work. When you at home with your children, when you have time to yourself, when you're in your man cave or your woman cave or whatever it is you're doing, spend some time with the Father. Spend some time in the Word. And it says, Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children. You honor your father, you'll have joy even with your own children. And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. And when you pray, you shall be heard. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life. You honor your father. You honor your mother. Honor your heavenly father. But honoring your mother and your, your father here on earth, you shall have a long life. And he that is disobedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. When you get older, you'll make sure mama don't want for nothing. You'll make sure your pops don't want for nothing. You'll take care of them as they take care of you. That's what we should be doing. We should make sure mama is straight. We should make sure our father is straight. That they're taken care of as they made sure we were taken care of. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Honor thy father and mother both in word and deed that a blessing may come upon thee from them. For the blessing of the father establishes the house of the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooteth out foundations. Glory not in the dishonor of thy father. 
For thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father, and a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. Did you just hear what it said? The father knew. The father knew that this stuff would be happening. That men and women would come to one another, have sex, have a baby, and then not know how to be a mother or a father. That mothers will provoke their children to wrath. That fathers will provoke their children to wrath by not being there. That some will give up their children for adoption and hurt their children. That their children will still search them out. The father knew all of this and it talks about it in the word. All you have to do is pick up the book and read and study and show yourself approved. My son, help thy father in his age and grieve him not as long as he liveth. And if he his understanding fail, have patience with him and despise him not when thou art in thy full strength. We are not. So when we get grown. We are not to tear our fathers down. We are not to disown them. We are to help them. We are to communicate with them. We are to love them. We are to forgive them. For the relieving of thy father. Shall not be forgotten. And instead of sins, it shall be added to build you up. In the day of thine affliction, it shall be remembered. Thy sins shall melt away as the ice in the fair warm weather. He that forsaketh his father is a blasphemer, and he that angereth his mother is cursed of God. Didn't you hear the part where it says, Honoring your father and your mother, doing what they tell you to do, you shall have a long life. But if you don't do that, you don't honor your father and your mother, you are cursed of the Most High. My son, go on with thy business in meekness, so that thou be beloved or beloved of him that is approved. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. Many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. For the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly. Seek not out the things that are too hard for you or for thee, Neither search the things that are above thy strength, but what is commanded of you. Think thereupon with reverence or respect, for it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Be not curious in un unnecessary matters, for more things are showed unto thee than men understand. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and evil suspicion hath overthrown their judgment. Without eyes thou shalt want light. Profess not the knowledge thereof, or therefore, that thou hast not. A stubborn heart shall phase evil. Oh, I'm sorry. A stubborn heart shall fare evil at last. And he that loveth danger shall perish therein. So if you love doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing, if you love danger, you shall die in danger. If you love listening to that danger and doing what danger has told you to do, you will die in that. That's what the Most High is saying. To these rappers that we've been listening to, to these movies that we've been watching, to all of this gang gang, to all of this killing and stealing, to all this doing all this sinful stuff, you will die in that. You will become that and then you will die because of who you have followed. Does that make sense? But if you following in the commands and the precepts, it comes with a promise. It comes with 
a blessing, but it also comes with temptation. It comes with a promise from the Father that He will protect you. He will guide you. He will see you on your way. He will order your steps in the ways of Him. When we seek Him, when we seek first the kingdom and His righteousness and His glory shall be added to us. When we seek His face, when we do what He tells us to do in the Word, when we seek Him all day, every day, and when we honor our Father and our mother, when we honor our wives, men, when we honor our children, we would, when we correct our children, when we discipline our children, and I'm not talking about putting your hands on them. I'm talking about bringing this correction here, bringing the father, the word back into your household. It comes with a promise, a long life, but you will get temptation. An obstinate heart shall be laden with sorrows. And the wicked man shall heap sin upon sin. In the punishment of the proud there is no remedy. For the plant of wickedness hath taken root in him. See, when you caught up in anger, when you caught up in frustration, when you caught up in the ways of this world, it will overtake you. And the only way to get out is to surrender to the Father. The heart of the prudent will understand a parable. And an attentive ear is the desire of a wise man. Water will quench a flaming fire. And alms maketh an atonement for sins. And he that require, requires good turns is mindful of that which may come hereafter. And when he falleth, he shall find a stay. Man, when I looked in here, and I, mean, I could even go to chapter 4. But I'm going to dive more into it before I even go there. But if I haven't told you anything today, I want to tell you. Keep on seeking the Father. Keep on seeking the kingdom. Bring the kingdom to earth. Bring heaven to earth. How does that look? That looks like a father that's involved with his children. That looks like a father that is doing more in action than he is doing in words. That looks like a husband that's honoring his wife, that's protecting his wife. That's caring for his wife. That's catering to his wife. That looks like a true leader. A true man of God. But to the women. What does that look like? A Proverbs 31. One that's not arguing with the husband. One that's not tearing them down. One that's lifting them up. As we're supposed to lift each other up. One that allows the man to be the man. We know that you've been everything. We know that you have been the, the mother and the father growing up. We know that. But now it's time for you to step back, sisters, and allow a real man, a real leader, a real man of God to come on in and to take some stress off of you. But you because you wasn't meant to do this alone. Maybe that man that you was with was just meant to give you children. Maybe he doesn't know how to be a father. And you have to be okay with that. But there are men out here who want to be a father. Who desire to actually treat you the way that you should be treated. And not treat you like a piece of meat. But treat you like a Proverbs 31. A wife should. That's more precious than silver, gold. That's more precious than the material things. But, but wants nothing but to give to you. Because that's what we were created for. To give. To plant. And you were created to receive and birth. Birth a nation. Birth the children into this world. Birth the vision of that man that comes into your life. That's what heaven looks like. It looks like the father. The son. 
the Holy Spirit. It looks like a mother, a father, and a child that's doing right and not doing wrong. Hey, man, I hope this blessed y'all. Please tune in to the YouTube channel. This is going straight to YouTube. It is going to be on here on um, Instagram, but it is going to YouTube. It is going to Facebook because we have to get this message out there. We have to get this to the women and the men so we can do right by our children and by ourselves. Because when our children leave the home, we still got to get along, men and women. Husband and wife, we still got to be able to get along with one another. And if we don't have that type of relationship, if we don't have that foundation, then all we're doing is just raising our children up to do the same thing that we did. Divorce one another, cheat on one another, tear each other down. And that's not what we should be doing. We should be showing them, them this now so they're not getting bullied at school. So they're not becoming a bully. So they're not indulging in sin. So they're not out there trying to find love in all the wrong places. So when someone talks down about them, they already know who they are because mama and daddy already gives them affirmations. Mama and daddy spends quality time with them. Mama, put, mama and daddy puts the time and effort in. But mama and daddy also have time for one another. Check me out on YouTube. Knowledge the Raven 2468. That's Knowledge D A R A V E N 2468. You got to put it all together. You can find me on the podcast at Brother Knowledge 2468. You can find me on uh, Clubhouse at Brother Knowledge. You can find me on Bego at Brother Knowledge. You can find me on TikTok at Brother Knowledge 2468. Likey. Brother Knowledge 2468. All you got to do is type in hashtag Brother Knowledge 2468 or Knowledge the Raven 2468 and you can find me. I love y'all. Blessings to y'all. Knowledge.